Jesus is the one who causes seeds to grow and plants the flower. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Such a beautiful day out there today. And most of the faces in here are smiling, so we're, we're, we're good there. Uh, are there announcements that we need to make this morning? Yes, Yes, Dan. if I might, please. I'd like to share some information about our situation at Hammond Hall. And there's, uh, on the back of the order of worship, there's information about the, the uh, situation. Uh, for several years, we've known that the air conditioning units at Hammond Hall were weak. And the one on the east side in particular, that the Hammond Hall is served by two units. So when the one that's on the east side, the compressor out here in the parking lot, has been terribly weak for the last several years, and we've been coaxing it along and uh, adding Freon and whatever necessary. But we knew the compressor was weak and just barely, barely putting out cold air. It is still working, but it's working so inefficiently that you can't hardly feel the cold air anymore from that unit. The one on the right, the one to the west, has now locked up. The compressor is seized. And so that means a major repair. And just please be prayerful and, and give consideration to what we, as we move through this situation. We have no air conditioning at Hammond Hall now, essentially. Uh, and it's gonna take, the, really the, the, the reasonable thing is to replace both units, they're, they're both over 25 years old, and they're, <clears throat> the firebox in this unit over here has already got many cracks in it. Not dangerous, but you can see with inspections and many cracks. So it would be ridiculous just to, heat, just to fix the air conditioning side and not address the uh, heating side. So we need total replacement of the two units on both sides. And we're looking in the neighborhood of somewhere 6,000 plus per unit. We don't know, we haven't got, we're working, we're getting estimates right now. We don't have the estimates firm, but we had conversation, so we know roughly what kind of expense we're looking at. So, we'll, Bill Brown and several of us are working on this, and we'll pull these numbers together. Actually, we'll have some hard numbers this coming week. But uh, I wanted to give some clarity to what's going on. It's not just a simple compressor replacement because that would be significant cost and it would be wasted money. And so it's, a, it, you know, it's one more hurdle we have to overcome, but we're going to get there. And thanks be to God, we've got you know, the support of so many good people to help us. Thank you. Other announcements? <laughs> Resilient United Methodist women can be. <laughs> God has truly blessed us. And men. And men. And men. And men. Yes, and thank men. you, men. Um, go ahead, yes. Uh, I might update you just a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on Terry Semeca. He, I talked to his sister last night that he passed us in. And he's shown some improvement. He's, he's trying to open his eyes. Uh, showing some signs of trying and uh, so it's just time but uh, I, I left some uh, some notes on the table in there that's got got his name and address on them and if you want to send him a card or something like that would probably be appreciated no flowers for, for sure but uh, um, any, any, yeah He's in Kansas City, Kansas, so it's uh, at a specialty hospital. And uh, anyway, if you're interested in doing that, go ahead. Or do it there. Thank you. Other announcements? Well, I see again we do not have any young people. Well, we've got little people. Oh, we do. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're way back there in the back where I can't see with all the big people in front of you. Come on up. I should have had my pot this week. Yeah. 
You put it on my head. Trim the apples. You want to just sit right down here? I wasn't prepared for such small young people, but it's so nice to have you here. You both look really nice. If I, if I showed this to you, you know what that is? A key. A key. You know what that key's to? No? I bet your mom and dad have a cat of key just like it. But maybe just a little different because each key is different, but they have a key to the house. Do you have a key to the house? You do. I have two keys. You have two keys. <laughs> Front door and back door. I have two keys too. One of them's to my deadbolt lock, and one of them's to the handle lock, so I can get in. I wasn't smart enough to have a key for the a, same thing. So. I have one in my pantry. You have one in your pantry? Oh, that's probably a good place to keep it. <laughs> what do you? What do you? What would you think about if I told you we have the keys to the kingdom? What would you? How would you describe it, that kind of a key? Would it be a metal one like this one? No. Would it be a plastic one? Would it be made out of rubber? Oh, you're so wise and you know all the answers. <laughs> no. That's Keys mom. to the kingdom is what? That's my mom over here. Yeah, hi, mom. <laughs> you want to come up? Yeah. <laughs> no, you're... Yeah, yeah, we just bring them all up. Yeah. Oh, good. Now, mom, do you have a key like this? I do. You do. Okay, good. Now, do you know what the keys to the kingdom are? The keys to the kingdom yeah. is what God has given us through Jesus. Jesus is our key to the kingdom. Do you know who Jesus is? Yes, good. Jesus is the person that's going to help us as we grow up in life and as we begin to be big people. And he will teach us what we need to know through our moms and our dads and through our teachers and our friends. And the key is that you follow the scriptures. Now, if you're too young, do you read yet? Yeah. You do? Oh, good. I, do you, read, do you, I read to my mom's books. You read books to your mom? That's great. You keep doing that. You keep doing that because that the more you do, the more you'll learn. I was just going to say what we need to also, when you get up where you're a little bigger and you can read a lot of big words then I want you to read the Bible. Because the Bible gives us all the keys to how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to treat people and how we're supposed to love. Do you love everybody? Yeah. Oh, great. I love this age. <laughs> you keep doing that your whole life, okay? But you have to like God and with your grandma. God is with your grandma. Okay. <laughs> she did. I saw her do it. We're going to show a, a video up here in just a bit, so that's why she did that. Thank you for coming up and allowing me to, to share with you the keys to the kingdom. And when you get back to your home, be sure every time you look at a key that you think of Jesus, because he's the key to the kingdom. And his words are in the Bible, okay? Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the small people that, that uh, brighten up our lives. Help them to understand that it's through you that this world would be a better place to live. And in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Mom, do I stay? The uh, special music that we have listed in the, uh, in the bulletin, um, I was contacted and, and Mallory has been, able, has been singing this and she wanted to sing it for the congregation, but she wants you to sing it with you. And so we're going to ask her to come forward. We will project the uh, music and the words. We'll have the music and project, project the words on the wall so that you can sing along with her. Um, as I understand, she's been having for quite some time to hard uh, talking, but she has a beautiful voice and, and uh, it's been about three years before since she could sing and I'm, I'm told that she does a wonderful job. So let's give her a hand and encouragement as she comes up.
Jane from Mallory. Yeah. 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 Scripture reader, would you like to come forward? <laughs> I just mesmerized. <laughs> Thank you, Mallory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot I had a job to do. <laughs> Our first reading comes from the New Testament book of Mark. And we're reading from page 38 in our Pew Bible. Mark 4, 26 through 34. Page 38. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day. And the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with a sickle, because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when shown upon the ground, sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and be becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth, forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. The use of parables. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to his disciples. And now we're, if you would please turn with me in your hymnal to page 795 and 796. We're going to read responsibly. Psalm 72, 1 through 17, and that's page 795 in your hymnal. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the royal son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your glory with justice. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May, May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May, May he be like rain, rain that falls on the long grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish, and peace abound, till the moon be no more. May they have dominion, dominion from sea to sea, and, and from, from the river to the ends of the earth. earth. May his foes bow down, bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish of the isles render him tribute. tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all the kings fall down before him, him. All, all nations serve him. him. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy. And saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessings invoked for him all the day. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains. May it fruit like the land of Lebanon. And may they blossom forth in the cities 
like the grain of the field. May his name endure forever. His fame continue as long as the sun. May people bless themselves by him. All nations call him blessed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. In our text this morning, there are two parables about seeds. And they describe the things that every gardener or farmer knows and understands. Both parables have the theme, this is what the kingdom of God is like. The common thread of, of both is that the presence of Jesus on earth signaled the, relief, the, the release of mysterious forces of God which began small, but would grow on earth and will eventually culminate in the full majesty and rule of God in all the earth and heavens. I did not write that comment. I, I, I picked it up somewhere, and unfortunately I didn't list the author, but I think he's captured that kind of a nutshell here. He, we're going to talk a little bit about the seed and, and as it's planted and grows and flourishes. And that not only deals with the seeds that grows plants, that grows with that includes the seeds that we plant in others about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Here we have two short parables that reveal so much that they teach us amazing, even surprising things about the kingdom of God. In verses 26 through 29, we have the parable of the growing seed. The parable has a distinction of being the only one that, it, that appears in, in uh, this particular um, set of, of Gospels. Mark uh, is the only one that listed, is found in none of the others. And broken down, Jesus teaches three things about the kingdom of God in this particular parable. The first one is found in verse 26 where we are given a verbal illustration of a mere seed. Because it's a parable, it's very vague, and we're just given enough information to understand that we have someone sowing a seed. Very simple. Someone is sowing a seed. Now, when we think of that, we envision in our, in our minds a, a digging a hole in the ground and, and planting a seed and covering it up, letting it grow. So it's very self-explanatory. It doesn't need a whole lot of, of information. Jesus said the kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed into the ground. Think about the word cast. You know, when I, as I just described, when I think of planting a seed, I dig that hole and I put that seed in there and I cover it back up and I water it. And then I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. But there's other ways. Evidently, we can cast that seed I suppose you could, you could uh, dig a, a row and then walk out there and just toss those seeds in. Uh, it would work. Uh, God does that himself, I think, with the seeds that comes out of the trees and the flowers that just float around outside. How many of you are allergic to cottonwood seeds? <laughs> well, God's planting seeds today. So, but that's, 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 I guess you can, you can cast them. But I usually think of digging and getting down in the dirt and getting my fingers dirty and dirt under the fingernails when I plant a seed. The kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed to the ground. I want you to think about that verse for just a moment. You would think that the kingdom of God would be compared to something great and grandiose. Not a small little seed. Surely there's better Examples to use in a seed, <clears throat> but that's what Jesus chose, a seed. James R. Edwards says, the paradox of the gospel is disguised in such common places. The God whom Jesus introduces will not be kept at celestial arm's length. Jesus does not tell us how high and lofty God is, but how very near and present he is. And how the routines of planting and harvesting are mundane clues to the nature of the plan of God. There you have it. Mundane things. A small seed. 
Doesn't that be great? Doesn't that be grandiose? Doesn't have to come with a lot of trumpets. You just plant a seed. A commonplace thing like a seed. And God planted it that way. Well, we like to feel comfortable and we feel that we're, we're just common people. Like, like a seed, we, we can be planted. God has planted us here in, in our churches so that we can grow and, and flower and, and, and begin to, to spread it, what we have to others. So in a way, we are God's seeds. This parable starts with the sower who scatters the seed. There's no harvest if the seeds aren't sown. Jesus is saying here that this is our job. This is what we need to do. We are told to plant the seeds. And while we will plant them in the ground, there's also seeds that we will plant in the mines of other people. And just as we don't know how well that seed in the ground is going to germinate and grow, we don't know how well it's going to grow in people, but God does. We don't see how that that uh, seed germinates and, and how it forms and, and how it begins to grow and, and flower and bloom. But God does. God knows exactly what he's doing and what it takes for that to happen. Part of our role is to sow the seed. Oh, there's more than that. We, we have to do a lot more later on. But the first step, the very first thing we have to do is plant the seed. And that's our part. That's what we're supposed to do. And then there's God's part. And that brings us to number two. In verses 27 through 28, we see that it's God who grows the seed. We have nothing to do with it. Oh, I wish I had the power to say, okay, grow seed. I want that watermelon or I want that apple or I want whatever it is that I plant. But that's not my job. That's not what he's allowed me to do. He, he just tells me to plant it and he'll take care of it. And that's how it works. That's God's job. Scripture says, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full grain in the ear. This is happening because God deems it this way. That's how he wants it. I, I say many times we're on God's time frame, and you can sure tell that when we plant something and we wait for it to grow. We're on God's time frame because that's how he planned it. He's deemed it this way. The seed grows into a blade and then matures into an ear and then produces grain in that ear. That's the process of growth. And that's what Jesus is doing as he compares this process in his parable. Jesus tells us that the growth of the kingdom of God is not always discernible. The farmer rises by night and day, it says, and while he is doing this, he's unaware of what's happening in the ground to that seed. It's invisible. We can't see it. But it's happening because that's God's plan. I remember when my kids were small, one or both of them uh, came home from Sunday school uh, or, or, or a school, I'm not sure which at this time, the older I get, the fuzzier things get. <laughs> they brought a little styrofoam cup and they said, Dad, I planted a seed in here and it's gonna grow. And I said, okay, what are you supposed to do? Well, I'm supposed to water it. Said, okay, so they water it and set it up in the windowsill get up the next morning, they come running in and look at that uh, styrofoam cup, nothing but dirt. I said, is there something else you're supposed to do? Nope, just water it. Okay, so we have water. Next day they get up, come running in and looked at that cup, still dirt, nothing there. And that happened time and time again. And after about six or seven uh, uh, days, I'm in the other room and I hear, Dad, come quick and look. So I go in and I look, and sure enough, there's a little green sprout, sprout sticking up out of that styrofoam cup. You see, it, it took time. No matter how much they wanted that thing to grow that day, it took a certain amount of time that God planned for that 
a sprout. I use this illustration because as we begin to sow seeds of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, into the minds of those who do not know him yet, we may not see the results. If we are around long enough and we see the results, then hopefully we will see that sprout. But we're on God's time frame. And so consequently, it'll take some time for that seed to begin to germinate and sprout and grow. In our parable this morning, Jesus teaches that much of what God is doing is unnoticeable to us. He secretly works in people's hearts and as he moves humans, rulers, and nations toward certain goals and directions for the advancement of his kingdom, things will happen. We just have to be patient enough to let things happen. All we can see is the outward budding of the stem. If we, if we talk to somebody that, that begins to understand a little bit about what we're saying, I've, I've had people come to me and say, you know, you told me such and such five, six weeks ago, and it just now dawned on me what that is. And, and then if we want to dig a little deeper, then we can get into the Bible and help them at that time. Sometimes they'll come and do that, sometimes they won't. I'll never know whether the seeds that I planted um, actually are going to bear fruit. But there are some visible signs. But most of it's invisible. I don't know. God says, let us, I'll take care of it. And that's why I'm leaving my life. There's a budding system in all of our seed planting. Not the dynamic work that's done in the earth. Not that everything that we do is going to be right, but God gives us a path to sow seeds and then to back off and let them grow. God's doing his job. And then it comes time for us to get involved again. That brings us to number three. There is always time for the farmer to bring in the harvest. Verse 29 says, But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. And now the farmer gets involved. That's when we get involved. Once we see that there is, is a fruit in what we've planted in the seed of others, then we are to get involved. We are to harvest to do that, to, to help them understand a little more about what's going on in life. God does only what he's supposed to do. He leaves it up to us. Once there is fruit, then it's up to us to harvest that fruit. God takes what I call the seeds of faith that we plant in others. And just like the seed that's planted in the ground, he nurtures, he nurtures that and lets that flourish and grow and become stable and become fruit. And that's when we need to step in as a, as a Christian and as a, and as a church. After God is done with the growing, then it's our time to step up. We must welcome these individuals. We must nurture these individuals. We must encourage them and accept them into our midst and let them know that God has led us to them and then to us that we might be able to nourish one another and become better Christians, better fruit, if you will, or grain. The second parable talked a little bit about a seed, and I'll just barely touch on it. It's the parable of mustard seed. It's similar in meaning to the parable of the growing seed, but uh, it talks about the contrast of the growth, not the growth itself. In Palestine, the smallest seed visible to the naked eye was the mustard seed. Uh, it takes 725 to 760 seeds to weigh a gram. Now, when I first started dating my wife uh, in, in high school, she wore a pen. It was a wishbone, and it had a little uh, a clear uh, bubble in the middle of it. And in the middle of that was a mustard seed, and I had to look real close to see what was in there. I, had, I said, what is that? She said, that's a mustard seed. 
So I can kind of visualize how big a mustard seed is. Maybe you can too. Maybe you've seen one. Or if not, you can rest assured they're very, very minor, minuscule seeds. So imagine the astonishment of Jesus here when they heard this comparison. When the Jews thought of the Messiah's kingdom, they thought of, of people with a, 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 a ruling people. They thought that they were going to be able to overthrow the Romans and get rid of those guys and be strong and mighty. But a mustard seed? How in the world is a mustard seed going to be strong and mighty? Have you ever seen what happens when a mustard seed is planted and germinates and grows? It grows into a bush that sometimes can be 20 feet tall from just a small, minuscule seed. What I'm talking about here is the church. We started out long ago as small, just a small group, relatively small group. And, and as we begin to talk about Jesus Christ and share the Lord with them, then more joined us. And so they grew. And more and more over the years began to, began to spread seeds themselves, and they began to grow. And that's the church today. The church today is so much bigger than it was when it started. But it's because of people who spread the seeds of faith to those who needed to hear it, whether they knew it or not. That's our job. God will take care of his part. We need to take care of our part. The influence of God's kingdom is incalculable. Despite its flaws, it's inspired much of the world's great art, architecture, music, and drama. But that doesn't even scratch the surface. John Phillips says this about the influence of Christianity in our world. Everywhere the kingdom of God has gone, it has brought with it hospitals and schools, truth, morality, and ethics, decency and compassion, and above all, salvation. We are saved because of Jesus Christ, the seed of God, who was planted in our hearts and our minds as we grew and we shared that, and we need to continue to do that. In these two parables, Jesus teaches us that the kingdom of God is unstoppable. It grows at God's pace and design, and it's vast. Woe be to us if we do not continue plant the seeds of faith that we've been instructed to do. So as you leave here today, go out and sow those seeds. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let us uh, turn in our hymnals and uh, stand and sing the uh, hymn of promise on number 707.
joys or concerns we want to lift up today? If not, let's be in an attitude of prayer. Holy One, you anoint us with the living water so that we may go to serve the world in these troubled days. You open our eyes so we will see everyone as our sisters and brothers. You are the seed planter and you place faith deep within us so we can bear witness to your just and loving kingdom. Your love regulates our hearts so we can welcome all in your name. You are the gentle spirit when we cannot see the way. You take us by the hand so that we can step forward in faith into the kingdom. You fill us with hope so that we can sing your praise all of our days. God in community, holy in one. Hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom I would ask you to turn in your hymnals now to page number 12, the service of word and table number two. In the United Methodist Church, all who uh, repent of their sins are welcome at the uh, communion table. We're going to ask uh, those that wish to come forward here shortly and uh, partake of the bread and the, <coughs> and the juice. Uh, we'll ask you to come up the center aisle, uh, take a cup from uh, the tray that will be offered. And I will break off a piece of the bread and, and uh, place it in your hands. Christ our Lord invites us to the table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in obedient to your church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have held against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us to joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In the, the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to this, the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Shirley, would you come forward and help me? As you come up to the center to receive your uh, um, bread and juice, you will enter either to the right or to the left. If you enter to this side and um, uh, go back to your seat by the outside aisle, please watch the cord that's on the, on the floor. Starting in the back, if you would come forward. Trying to keep some distance um, as we come forward.
for those that need to be served in the pews. As you came in, you may have noticed that the offering plate is still out in the uh, foyer. If you didn't get a chance to drop a, a, a tithe or an offering in there and you wish to, please do that on your way out. I will dedicate the tithes and offering at this time. Lord of all bounty and blessing, the gifts we offer to you are like seeds. Some will take root nearby and we will see them grow and bear fruit. Some will be carried far beyond where they can be seen. And we have faith that they will find good soil and thrive. We thank you for the privilege of being called to sow. Bless with the joy of good fruit the seed we will see and the seed we will never see. We pray this in the loving name of Jesus Christ, our gardener and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Go and scatter seeds that they may grow and nurture in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Amen.